Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how you would export images from Lightroom. Now I'm going to assume that we're finished making changes to these images. If I needed to go over to Photoshop I could do an edit in, but that's really if you just want to work on one image at a time. If I had 500 images and I needed to convert them maybe from their original raw format to JPEG files or to PSD or TIFF files, I wouldn't want to do that one at a time and I certainly wouldn't want to hand off that many images to Photoshop all at one time either. So let's take a look at how we can automate that in Lightroom. I've got this collection of images. I'll go ahead and select all of the images by using Command A or Control A on Windows to select all and then click the export button. Here we can see at the top that I had 13 images selected and we're going to export all 13 of those images. Now we get to choose where we want to export these files. We can either choose to export them to a specific folder or we can choose the same folder as the original photo. And then we also have this option to choose a folder later which can be useful for creating presets. But for now let's go ahead and choose a specific folder. And then we can navigate to that folder. For now I'll click choose and then we'll just navigate to the desktop, click choose, and then I'm going to tell Lightroom to put the images into a subfolder. In this case I'm going to call it SLC and then that's for Salt Lake City and I'm going to put post because I'm going to want to post these images to my website. All right. If I wanted to, I could add these images back into the catalog, but in this case, since I've already got the originals and I'm really just creating derivatives here that I'm going to upload and then I don't really need to keep track of them after that, so I'm not going to import them or add them back into this catalog. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the file naming options here. It's up to you whether or not you want to rename your files on export. What I typically do is I'll typically just add something after the original file name. That way I know that the original file name will stay the same and the only thing that's going to change is something that's going to tell me maybe where I posted the files or what it is that I've done to them. So for example if I wanted to add something like an LR for low res after this, I would go in and make an edit and in this case I'm going to delete the custom text. Instead I will choose my original file name. I'll insert that, put a little underscore and then LR for low res or maybe 800 pixels or whatever information is relevant to those images. And then we can come down here and save this as a new preset if this is a naming convention that I'm going to use over and over again. So in this case I'll put FN for file name and then underscore here LR for low res. Excellent. We'll click create and now that template is going to become part of the list of templates that I can access whether I'm importing files or if I'm exporting them or if I'm batch renaming anywhere in Lightroom. All right, after I've decided how I wanted to rename the files, I need to decide whether or not I want to include any video. In this case I don't have any so I'll leave that off. As far as file settings go, here I get to pick the file format. In this case I'm going to select JPEG. I'm going to bring the color space down to sRGB because I will be posting these online. And then I need to determine the quality slider. So obviously this is going to be a trade-off because I'm saving as a JPEG file. The higher the quality slider, the higher the quality of the image, but the larger the image is going to be. So I know that if I change this to 90 for my quality, Quality, I'm probably going to cut the file size almost by a third and if I move this down to 80 I'm probably going to cut the file size down nearly in half. Of course it's always dependent on what is in the photograph but I'm going to go with 80 for my quality. If I knew I had to keep these under a specific file size, I could limit it right down here and then put in however many K I need to limit that to. But in this case we'll just go back to the quality of 80. As far as image size, if I need to resize my image, I think one of the great options here is to resize to fit the long edge because what that'll do is if I have some horizontal images and some vertical images is it will constrain them so that the longest dimension, whether horizontal or vertical, will fit within the number of pixels that I designate below. So in this case I'm going to say 800 pixels and we'll go ahead and keep that resolution at 72. 
Below that, I can choose how much sharpening I want. Since these are going to be prepared for screen, I'll go ahead and select that, but you should know that you can also prepare them for printing on either matte or glossy paper. And I'm going to choose the standard amount. It really does sort of depend on your personal taste for how much sharpening and also the content of the images. So if your images are super soft, like maybe clouds, you might want to change this to low to make sure that you don't get any artifacting. If you've got a really hard edged object and you really want to make sure they stay crisp, you might want to change this to high. All right, for now we'll leave it to standard and then move down to metadata. I want to make sure that the copyright and contact information is actually embedded in each one of these files, so I'll leave it set here. If I wanted to narrow it down further, I could narrow it down to the copyright, but I'm not that concerned about how much data is in the contact info, so it's not going to make my file size that much larger, so I'll go ahead and leave it. Then if I wanted to add a watermark to these, I certainly could. I could click on the watermark option, and then we could go in here. I could edit my watermark, and I could go ahead and create a watermark and resize it, and then add maybe a drop shadow to it. And Anyway, I could do anything in the watermark editor, but I'm actually not going to add a watermark to these, so I'm going to hit cancel and uncheck that. And then I just want to point out that there is an option here in post-processing if you wanted to export, say, maybe 500 images and then hand them off to Photoshop so that it could run a batch process, just know that you can do that here. And I'll just show you, here's one example right here, this edge effect. This is actually a droplet that I've created in Photoshop. I first created an action and then paired that action with the batch processing commands in Photoshop to create this action. I have another video that explains exactly how to do this on my blog, and that's just blogs.adobe.com slash jcost. Just go over to the Lightroom video area, and there'll be a movie that explains this step by step. All right, for now I'm going to leave it set to do nothing, and if I feel that these are settings that I'm going to use over and over again, I'll want to make sure that I add this as a preset clicking the Add button, and then I can name this. And I'd want to be rather descriptive with this, so I'd probably want to go in and put in all of my options, like the fact that it's 800 pixels, and my, that it's going to be JPEG as a quality of 80 and sRGB. But since I'm actually going to throw this away after just running this test, I'm just going to call it Test and save it in my user presets. But as you can see, I have a number of presets that I do often use to export my files depending on where they're going to end up. All right, once I click Export, Lightroom will go ahead and export all 13 of those files. You can see it's starting to do so. But one thing to know is that even if you're exporting files, you can always go in and either change folders, or maybe you want to export the same set of files in a different format. I can click Export and start another export while the first one's still going on. So if you do have 500 or 1,000 images that you're trying to batch process and you want them in two file formats, just set it up once, start that going, and then come in here and set up your second set of options and start that running. They can run simultaneously. Another command that I find really handy, because often I tend to export a number of images and then realize that I've just forgotten one or two. So you should know that if you do forget one or two images and you select them, you can always use the File menu here, come down to Export with Previous, or use the keyboard shortcut here, which is basically Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E, and it will just export those selected files with those previous settings. And you don't have to go into the export module once you've created your presets. If I right mouse click, you can see here under the export menu, I have all of these different presets that I can quickly select from without even revisiting that dialog. Excellent. That was a quick overview of how to export multiple files at one time from Lightroom to multiple devices. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.